So today I'm going to hopefully inspire a lot of you into not giving up on your dreams. The story starts with these two words, art and science. Right? So basically we have divided our academics into two major parts. Our sciences where everything makes sense and apparently arts where we have to reform and go whatever we want to do. And we tend to make it from something that this thing has no rules. Right? So the thing is, this is what the universe generally thinks of our academics. But in our society, especially in Pakistan, parents tend to define this in a rather different way. Right? It is art and not science. Right? Science and not science, sorry. So the thing is, I have at some point, I am pretty sure all of you have had this conversation with your parents where they try to make you focus towards something science and give up on your dreams, right? Especially if it is art, because I mean, come on, who, who want you to be born in a family of med medical doctors of high achievers and then turn into doctor, right? So the same case went with me. For example, one day my mother asked me, so are you really serious about photography? Right? Now if you know anything about Pakistani parents, you know that is not a question. Right? <laughs> and you can tell that by the by the tone of your mother, right? Because that tone also has an answer to it that she is expecting a no. <laughs> right? So it sounds like a question, it's not. And you probably would reply, reply with yes, I want to. Right? So the task starts start rolling in, lighting and everything. And she will still ask, but what about all this science and all this education that you went to, the college you went through? Right? Now this bothered me a lot. Like why is it like this? Like why is there like two things? You can either do arts or you can do science. Right? Why is why can't they both be seen? Like why is it there something that they make sense? Right? Because science explains what the universe is and art and allows us to express it. So this is what you will generally consider art, right? Something artist would consider art at least. I mean we are probably confused by a lot of this. Let me take you through a very quick history of photography, right? In 2081, we discovered optics. Of course, if you are going to talk about science, I think Newton has to drop in every time. So he discovered that light reflects and it is made up of more than one, like said, multiple components, right? We went on this chemist. He discovered that silver nitrate when exposed to light goes dark. He's like, oh, now that now we've got it. We realize how to bend light. We are going to bend light to the silver nitrate and make it go dark. We got our first picture, right? A physicist made the first color photograph. A physician found a way that you don't need to apply silver nitrate on glass. In fact, you can apply it to a rather gelatin-based material so that it becomes flexible and you can carry it around. Glass wasn't flexible. You couldn't carry it around. It was something very studio-based, right? An engineer in Germany uh, looked up this idea and developed the first actual uh, production model of a camera that everyone could buy. Another engineer in Kodak brought in the first digital camera, right? I mean, it wasn't something amazing, 0 0.01 megapixel. Not entirely sure why I didn't bother putting megapixel in front of it, but this is what it is. Now, one thing I need you, all of you to notice something. Every single thing, this is put off you by the way. This is an art form, very established art form. But you start to understand something very critical here. That put off did not come from an artist. It comes from a curiosity of a scientist. This has nothing to do with an artist's desire to create something, right? It is an art form, but made by scientists. But of course, if this is the path you want to take, you will be, well, disappointed because in Pakistan, no one has ever done any development in technology as such. We do not build hardware, right? So, at some point, you have to explain to your mom again that why you can't focus on science as well. You just need to abandon all that education and just go arts because you can't do anything with science. So she would expect, okay, so my son is probably going to take this sort of pictures, right? This is a landscape standard picture or like all these generic pictures. Like you can take really good pictures, but like generic this is what essentially they are. It's a picture of the food, people, dogs, stuff. But here is what I could never make peace with. I could not abandon my science and I could not abandon my art. And it still does not make sense to me. And I kept fighting for it. Back in 2012, I built this thing. This rather interesting or not so interesting looking thing is a robot that is designed to take very very high resolution pictures of an area. I took that up. I'm from Islamabad. 
and this is an Islamabad panorama, right? Now, nothing incredible about a panorama as such, except this is 2200 megapixels, right? Addition, what that basically means is, when you get bored, you can zoom all the way in. You get detail, and this is one image, and here a robot shot this, a line of code. It shot 552 images, stitched them together, gave this image, and the you can see street sign goes. Right? <laughs> this is science doing art. So this was the first thing that I made that had something to do with art. So this got me inspired, and I took this for Along the way, AI became something that I was very interested in. So a question came about, can you teach a robot how to do photography, like entirely photography? That struggle went on for three years. Ultimately, we ended up with this. This is a robot that does tracking and everything. This is how we test it. I will show you the kind of images it takes as well, right? So it's like, it has complete freedom. It can track no matter how fast you run, no matter where you are, what sort of light you are. We presented it at HEC AI conference because how successful it ended up being. This entire gallery is shot, edited, and assembled by code. Every single thing. It can find individuals, it knows when to go in portrait mode. It takes care of everything. We placed it in an open house and we let it stay there and it covered the entire event on its own. It edits as it goes along. So what I basically do is build more stuff. This is uh, an example of light. So the next problem with photography is because we are going to automate photography. So the next problem with photography is light. You probably would have seen these photographers all day around moving around these lights. So this little contraction is essentially about that it tracks your lights. Like if I move, start moving my camera around, it calculates distances and it's going to decide what is the optimum light for you. You do not have to worry about creating lights anymore. Again, line of code that is doing art. Let me give you a better example that you probably are going to like more. So this rather complicated little contraption is a rig that is designed to track water drops and take their pictures, right? It is so accurate that you can basically track the entire drop through its motion. And again, lines of code that know when to take a picture, how to take a picture and track it. We were kept working on it that ultimately we created an AI that could actually make sculptures out of water. It knows how to make a pillar, it knows how to add a flower to it. So this is something again, pure line of code, pure science doing art. Now, the thing that I started to discover was that if you are going to develop this further, you hit a huge obstacle in Pakistan. No one in our society is willing to accept the fact that they can be mixed. This is something that we have agreed. You're either going to be an artist, you're either going to be a scientist. And this has stopped this development for years. I showed you the invention timeline. Not a single person was from this region of the world, right? Not a single one. As a computer scientist, I think it is my obligation to blow some minds more, so allow me to do that. Do you remember this picture that I showed you? Yes. It's a landscape picture. This is not a real picture. This place does not exist at all, in fact. What Google did was, it created an AI that went through its Google Street Maps and tried to create a picture that would look like a landscape. This is not a real place at all, right? It learned. That, okay, so this is how AI basically works. I'm going to show you another example of it. Again, street view, if you can see what is below, and create a whole new landscape. This picture, these places do not exist and they are photorealistic. This is again science doing art for you. Remember this picture, this slide. Not a single picture in this slide is real. These people do not exist in the world. Right? I mean, to disappoint you further, that burger even is going to be a thing. So this is, this is a research that came out of NVIDIA. What they did was they took millions of pictures of people and they basically trained their code, okay, so this is what a face looks like. 
right? And then they ask their code, okay, now make a face that isn't this, but you know how to make a face. So they created these faces, and these people do not exist. That is again science doing art. <laughs> yeah, the burger that I'm going to disappoint you with. It's not clear. Right? Remember this slide? Only one picture here is actually real. I mean, study. Both of these pictures are basically drawn by another AI algorithm. And they are so good that that picture actually was sold for $432,000. That is how accurate it is. But let's not forget Starry Nights because Google took care of it. <laughs> right? So they basically traded on objects that you find around and then asked it to make it look like Starry Nights. And this is just AI putting things together to make sure it looks something like an art. My entire talk is about just this that science is art. that you, are, you want to walk into this field of art, do understand that that does not mean you give up on your skills or any other technical knowledge that you have because art is something different. It is not different. It has never been different. That line has been blurred a long ago. And hopefully, we can go back to creating art. Our society accepts creating art so that we can progress in this whole art form and science together because they aren't independent anymore. We have moved away from that. Thank you.